the divide over how to use Bitcoin in the blockchain is really part of a much broader debate our society is having right now about open versus closed systems. With virtual currencies in the blockchain, the original believers in this technology, and I think a lot of people in Silicon Valley, still have this idea that the most important part of this system is that it's open, that anybody can use it, that anybody can participate. Just like in Wikipedia, that anybody can come in and edit the entries and add their expertise and knowledge to the system. I think on, on Wall Street and in government, there is a suspicion of the sort of open system that Bitcoin or Ethereum represents where anybody can participate. In order to maintain the security of the system, I think on Wall Street and in government, there's the desire to have a sort of limited number of par people participating so that you can essentially know that you can trust everybody within the system. <laughs> That's totally on background. Totally on background. Blue, can you blur my face? Just leave my purple tie, which is going to be the only tie in the entire documentary. You're, you're so tie is our three. And like your voice change. <laughs> With like that voice distortion right, box. Measures. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I could have used that earlier today. Yeah. We don't believe in proof of work. <laughs> <laughs> R3 is currently building towards a permission system, a private system, because that is the mandate we have gotten from our banks because they are being told and they have a strong understanding of client privacy laws and various different other confidentiality provisions, but also it's the mandate they're getting from their regulators that they have to play by a certain set of rules. I don't particularly have much interest in the private blockchain sector. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that you get much benefit from having a closed ledger, a, a private ledger. I mean, sure, there, there are some benefits, but what is really different between a private ledger built on blockchain technology and a private ledger built on, you know, uh, SQL database technology? Major financial institutions are skeptical about open ledgers for a set of reasons. First of all, Wall Street operates under a set of regulatory constraints that they can't afford to just ignore their central bankers or their various different securities or derivatives regulators, their conduct regulators. I have a front seat to the question about can Bitcoin technology, blockchain technology work in a regulated environment because I'm on the board of a company called Coinbase, which is probably the leading exchange and, and hosted wallet provider here in the United States and one of the leading uh, companies around the world, and they have to operate in a regulated environment. If you look at the Bitcoin debate right now, where they're arguing over block size and they're having trouble scaling that system, and they're only at a point now where they can handle seven transactions a second, and the world of global finance handles thousands, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of transactions every second, if you include credit card swipes and interest, you know, trades and securities and et cetera, et cetera. I'm not yet convinced the private blockchain is anything new. It's probably a tool to help information sharing between banks. But then if you consider that information sharing has to um, be associated with common uh, codes of business practice, then you also have to consider that it's a, it's a route towards cartelization of the banking sector. And in the worst case scenario, it creates a sort of one bank system. You know, at a high level, I just kind of think of it as an industry grappling with a new technology and, and, and not being, you know, not really liking what they see. Silicon Valley vision used to be, although it's evolving, is one in which the future of money looks nothing five or 10 years from now the way it does now. The ecosystem is different. The participants are different. Banks and central banks don't play the role that they currently do now. And they're developing technology to empower a new world. Wall Street doesn't think like that. It could be quite disruptive to their business model. This is a network that uh, 
you don't get charged to uh, move money on, right? And a big part of how banks and brokerages make money is they, they take a piece of the transaction. Silicon Valley institutions have kind of looked at on banking and gone, well, what do they really do? They deal with information and they deal with uh, databases and they deal with risk. And really, we kind of do that as well. So why shouldn't we do the business of banking? We're technology firms. For most of Silicon Valley's history, Wall Street has been the customer. But I think in the past decade, um, going back to maybe the late 90s or the early part of the 2000s, um, a lot of entrepreneurs, and really entrepreneurs are where this thing starts, VCs tend to follow, um, started to see Wall Street as a, an industry that they could compete with. Banks have always been technology firms. They've never not been technology firms. The only difference really is that banks are technology firms who take risk and then um, after a while uh, get in trouble for taking that risk and then they suffer the consequences. A lot of people use the example of Uber or Airbnb. And the, the example there is they wanted to be innovative. They went out and broke a few rules, busted up some China in a China shop and then asked for forgiveness later. Well, that's one thing if you're taking on the taxi cab commission of a town somewhere. That's another thing if you're taking on the hotel authority of a municipality somewhere. If you're taking on the central bank or the Federal Reserve, if you're taking on the equivalent of the Securities and Exchange Commission, and you're just going to decide not to play by the rules, you're just going to decide to break the law where they have both criminal and civil ability to come in and hold you to account, that's a much, much bigger issue. That idea of just deciding to break the rules and upend the entire financial services is frankly naive. I think that there are changes afoot in society that are actually begging for these technologies to get to the point where we can actually build stuff with them. Bitcoin and blockchain technologies are waiting for a killer app or a series of killer apps that will make it obvious to people why this technology really matters. There's one vision of the future in which either the open systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum win, or the closed systems being developed by banks and governments win. But I think there's another vision of the future in which these systems can actually exist alongside each other and interact with each other depending on what somebody wants to do with their money. Change from one kind of economy to another is likely to be incredibly painful, but when we get to the other side, it'll be better.